PK52, the Saturday morning meeting. Hey, this is going to be a multi-part series. I've just wrote a brand new program for the Chicago region. Hopefully, I'll get it around the whole United States called Tactical Digital. As I believe everything has gone digital, the more digital we come, the bigger our future is. Right now, future is good. Future in the next couple of weeks is good. But two or three, four years down the road, the more people that know who you are, the more business you're going to do. And that's in any sales industry. So let me go old school for a second. So I'm going to fly this up on the screen right up here. So this is the old source book. This came from 2005. I used to have one from every single year. This was full of all Toyota information. It had all the information about the size of the car, the horsepower of the car, the what equipment the car came on, the accessories for the car, and then anything I put in here, the JD Power surveys, a small car cost guide, but anything I needed to be able to have a conversation with a customer, whether it was my product or product comparison, was all in this book. Well, to be honest with you, things have changed. They've gone digital now. Now you have Engage. Everything that Toyota's printed, everything about the Toyota product is on Engage, and a lot of the salespeople don't use Engage on a daily basis. So that would be my playbook. If I was a professional athlete, then my coach and my, and my general manager, the team has decided this is the way we're going to play our sport, and we would have a playbook, and it would be the rules of the way we engage, the way we play our game. Well, Engage is the, is the, is the playbook. So every single week, you should spend time in Engage trying to learn something about the Toyota product that you don't know. And everybody knows that. It just seems like we can't dedicate the time. We'll work eight to 10 hours a day, five to six days a week, and never block away time to be able to, to continue our education to get the best of the best of the best. So I guess the example is, do you want to be a salesperson? or you want to be a sales professional. There's a difference between an athlete and a professional athlete, and I think that everybody asked that question wants to be in the ranks of professional. It takes a lot of practice, a lot of effort, a lot of repetition to become a, pre a professional. And I want to be a professional that plays in the game. Don't want to be that professional that sits on the sideline as part of the team. I want to be the starter. I want to be the best I possibly can be. So the following will outline kind of what I'm trying to do right here. So we'll look at digital leads efficiency. I'll do a couple of these. And we're also looking at, at opportunities for physical and digital. So how many digital leads are sent into any business every single month? And a digital lead is somebody that's gone far enough to give enough information that we could transfer that information to the dealership. So these people are interested. I don't know why they were on. Maybe they were looking at cars. Maybe they have no intention of buying the car but they were at least interested enough to, to do some research on the car, and now this lead has been forwarded to your dealership. So they may not buy now, but now doesn't have to be today. Today could be a year from today, and I still want that customer. So I don't think any lead is a dead lead. I think it just may not happen at this moment. So let me move forward. So the leads right now nationally for Toyota, if I give you the national numbers that are on the side over here. So right now we're sitting at a little over a million leads. So that is leads on people trying to buy a new car from Toyota. Now, I realize there's some issues right now with supply, but they're interested in buying a Toyota and they're pursuing information about the purchase of a Toyota. Of those leads, right now we're closing at 11.2%. On the used car side, we're closing at 11.9%. That call, let's call that 11 and 12%. So 11% means 89% of the people that were interested in something I have to sell didn't buy a car from me. 89%. On the used car, it was 88%. So uh, I know those numbers are pretty much lined up with everything in the industry, but they're not acceptable to me. Are they acceptable to you? I realize if I'm trying to buy a product, I can buy it anywhere. I can buy a RAV4, I can buy a 4Runner, I can buy a Camry, I can buy them anywhere. If I'm willing to wait for the car, I can buy in any dealership in any town, as long as they have a Toyota franchise. So I'm not committed to the salesperson or the dealership, I'm committed to finding the car. And so that leads to a little bit of a problem. So 88 to 89% of the customers that we know are interested in a vehicle in some form or fashion are not buying a car from us. And I think that the majority of the dealerships wait to start the car sale when the customer comes in. I think the majority of the BDCs and the internet department, their number one job is to set an appointment. Let me explain to you about an appointment and then you can judge whether you think I'm right or not. I've got somebody on the phone. They're interested in a RAV4 
And I said, well, when would you like to come in? Well, you know, I hadn't made a decision to come in yet. So they, excuses, they're not, they're not going to commit to an appointment. So the person pushes for the appointment from the internet department. They say, well, we got an availability at two o'clock on Saturday. Does that work for you? The customer goes, yeah, that'll work for me. Now, why would they do that when they didn't intend to come in? They're not ready to come in yet. Why did they go ahead and accept the two o'clock appointment that was shoved on them? Well, I'll tell you a little secret about customers because I've been doing this a long time. Once I set the appointment, once I say, yeah, two o'clock on Saturday sounds good, then I know you're not going to call me anymore because now I'm expected to show up at two o'clock. If I don't set the appointment, am I going to expect you to follow up? Absolutely. You're going to follow up multiple times and you're going to wear me out. So by accepting that two o'clock appointment, which I did not intend to come to, now you don't call me back anymore and then you pass that on to the front desk and everything. Hey, they're coming in at two o'clock. One of the number one reasons why a customer doesn't show up because they never intended to show up. Number two reason is because at 10 o'clock in the morning, they bought somewhere else. So what I want to do is I want to be good enough with the way I structure my business so that I'm not setting appointments, I'm setting deliveries. And the only way to do that is digital. There are so many things that 20 years ago you had to do. Bring them in, show them the car, give them some information, try to find a brochure for them. All that's gone now because they don't even need us to find the information about the car. So what I've got to do is I've got to change the way that I process people on a digital lead. And I got to be honest with you, 88 to 89% missed opportunity is not acceptable to me. And I don't have to make it 50-50. I don't have to make it 30-70. If I move that a couple of percentages, I change my lifestyle, I change my income, and I change my success rate. So physical, so physical opportunities. I keep hearing there's no cars for sale. Well, there's 280 million registered cars that are being driven on the road. So 280 million cars are being driven on the road. So I know there's cars out there available on the used car side, and I know some of these people are going to end up buying a new car. And so that's the, that's the thing. I, I will never sell everybody a car. I will never get close to selling everybody a car because I'm probably never going to sell 280 million people a car. But you know what? They're on the road, they're registered, and they're an opportunity for me. With the way people are buying cars in America right now, when they're searching for the car they want on a nationwide scale, not in my market, not in my state, but they're looking for a single car, and they're hitting nationwide because cars are short in supply right now, and they're willing to fly to a place they've never been before to buy the car, then I know that the 280 million people are in play. I hate, it. I hate it that I think that way, but that's the way I think. More drivers that know who you are and what you do, the bigger your results. So there are kind of trainers out there right now that want to show you some closing techniques. You know, word tracks and closing techniques, which are fine. Which are fine. If you're studying your word tracks, that means you're getting more confident when you're having a conversation with a customer, either digitally or physically. I'm all about that. But if they know who you are and they know what you do and they know what you represent, you don't have to close them. They're going to come and buy a car from you because they're going to be comfortable with you. So I think the goal is not to learn some word tracks. I think the goal is to make sure that you market yourself to the public so everybody knows who you are. So I'll give you a background a long, long time ago when I started selling cars. I joined Toastmasters. And I don't know if you have a Toastmasters chapter where you are, but it's an international speaking association. One of the hardest things in the world is to get up in front of a group of people and do a speech. People are terrified about that. You were terrified in high school, you were terrified in elementary school, and you certainly didn't want to do it in college if you went to college. You just don't like to stand up and expose yourself. Some people are good at it, some people aren't. What Toastmasters did is took business and professional people, doctors and lawyers and people that own businesses, and made them learn how to get up and speak in front of a group. It was an international speaking association. The better you can communicate, the better off you are. Well, so I joined Toastmasters. How many sales people that sold cars do you think were a member of that chapter of Toastmasters? Well, you already guessed it. There was one. And so my goal was not only to do speeches in front of everybody, because I didn't have a problem with that. My goal was to sell everybody in that room and their spouse and their children a car. So I joined an organization in order to further my career. How did I further my career? I furthered my career by introducing myself to the people in town that had all the money, that were moving the city. Some of them were in politics. And I met the people that controlled the city. And therefore, I was their car person. I also went to every Chamber of Commerce meeting that I could go to. And I joined 
uh, you know, several other organizations and donated money and time to stuff like, you know, it, t today's market, you know, donate time to St. Jude's in your, mo in your market area if there's something in St. Jude's. I was a member of, uh, of the Kiwanis Club. I, I joined the golf course the, at the country club, and I didn't join it because I love to play golf. I joined it because if I played every Wednesday and I played as a single, I got to play with the lawyers and the doctors and the judges in town. And, uh, you know, gang, I sold cars because I played golf. You know, third hole, I'm hitting a shot, and they go, what do you do for a living? I, I sell cars. We'll try to sell all three of you a car before the end of this round. Uh, you're up. You know, and, I, and, and maybe that's funny, but that's what I did. I tried to know every single person in the city that had some way to buy a car. The more you market yourself, the easier the sales business becomes. If they know you and they know what you do, the bigger your results. There's 330 million people living in the United States. Now, not everybody's gonna get a car. Some people live in a city and they take the train, they take the bus, and they use city transit. But some people live in the market area where you are, don't have one car, they have two cars. And so I'd like to know every person that is in a two-car family because they're gonna, they like cars, I'd like to know who they are. So I look at digital, the way we're doing things today, and I look at digital, Amazon. So there is very little product that you can't get delivered to your home with Amazon. Almost everything that you need on a daily basis can be delivered by Amazon, and some of it can be delivered same day. So how many people over the next couple of years are going to stop going to Walmart, are going to stop going to Target, are going to stop going to the convenience store because they'll deliver it to your home at no charge? All you got to be Amazon Prime, here it comes. And you know what? It's funny because nobody realizes how powerful that company is becoming because now everything we buy and everything we do, we go through Amazon. If you look at billboards, I look at billboards of lawyers, and insurance agents. Are they, are they really selling you the Prudential insurance agent? Are they selling you Geico? Um, are, they, are they selling the insurance agency? Or is there a giant picture of them saying, you're in, KC Nix, your insurance agent? So what are they selling? They're not selling insurance because insurance takes your money. You know, insurance, you have to pay for insurance. But look who's working for you. That person up on that giant billboard. So you're in an accident and a truck runs over you. Here's, a, here's the lawyer that's going to give you millions of dollars. It's not the law firm. It's not the judge. It's that person on the billboard. So what are they marketing? So Amazon gives you the product. The billboards markets the person. And then we look at media buys. Nike buys Giant. So does Toyota. I mean, we do the Olympics. We do the Paralympics. Every halftime show of every sports deal, the Toyota halftime show. The word Toyota is being branded all the time. Um, and then you look, at, you look at stuff like restaurants. When do the restaurant advertisements come on TV and the food advertisements? When you're the hungriest. And it drives you crazy because you're hungry. If you're on a diet, every commercial on TV is a commercial about food you shouldn't eat. Correct? Then I look at information. I can find anything I want on Google. I put in the words and there, there'll be sources for Google. On YouTube, I can find out how to fix things. If I wanted to find out about the features and benefits of a Toyota RAV4, I can go to YouTube and put Toyota RAV4 2022 and somebody, not a Toyota salesperson, but an influencer is going to do about a 20 minute walk around on the whole car. They're going to talk about the whole car. They're going to give their opinion. They're going to talk about power plant. They're going to talk about the interior fit and finish. They're going to talk about the overall car, how it comes equipped, the different trim levels. But, it, but so I don't need to go to a dealership to get a walk around because if I go to YouTube or Google, I can get somebody to do a walk around right there on my computer screen at home, and they're probably going to be more complete because I'm paying attention to them and I'm not being preoccupied at a dealership. Isn't that crazy? So all the things that we thought that we brought to the game now can be brought to the game digitally. Social, I remember when I was a kid, I remember asking my parents for a bike. All my, all my friends had really cool bikes, little Stingray bikes, and I, I just wanted it so I could ride the neighborhood and terrorize the neighborhood on a bike. Now kids don't want a bike, they want an iPhone. Why do they want an iPhone? Because they want their Instagram, their TikTok, they want to be on Twitter and Facebook. You go to a restaurant, you see a bunch of young kids all sitting together at a table. None of them are talking, they're all texting. And who are they texting? The other people sitting at the table. 
So I'm not saying I like that. I'm not saying I don't like that. I'm saying that's reality. And right now what I'm telling all of you is if you want your future to be bigger than ever before, and I know you're worried about today, I know you're worried about the week, and I know you're worried about closing the month out. I know that. But what I'm saying is, if you want to be a big time player in the future, you've got to grasp this digital and put yourself out there. That is key number one for continued growth in your career. The art of the appointment, very important question I'm asking right now, is the appointment for the vehicle or for you? 99.9% .9 of the people are coming to see a car. If 99.9% .9 of the vehicle were coming to see you, because the work you've done up front, because all the things that you did that nobody else did for these people, if the appointment was for you, the only thing they were coming to the dealership was because they wanted to do business with you, then your career would be bigger than it's ever been before. Quit making the appointment on the car. Appointments. I don't make appointments anymore. I, I set deliveries. If I can give you all the information I used to give you 20 years ago, upfront digitally before you even decide which dealership to come from, then when you come in, the only thing left to do is deliver the car. Right now, we're in a situation where we're delivering cars without doing any of this because we have one forerunner coming in, and if they want it, they have to buy it. They don't have a choice. All of us watching this right now know that as interest rates go up and the market slows down, as people come back into the market with a giant amount of negative equity, the market slows down. You want inventory back? You're going to get inventory back, and you're going to get inventory back when the car market slows down. So it's not because Toyota's making more cars or Ford or Hyundai's making more cars. It's because the demand for cars are going down, and so your supply is going to go back up. As your supply goes up, your gross per unit is going to go down. So what do I need to do right now to prepare for that coming because we know it's coming? Is to quit selling the car and start selling yourself. Cox is a, is a very digitally minded resource company and digital data right now is the king. And they say that 85% of people, or 95%, excuse me, 95% of the people buy a car because they were influenced by a video. They went on to Google, they wanted to find out information on a Camry, and the next thing you know, there's somebody doing a walk around on a Camry. And they watched the walk around and they were influenced by that very influential video. Unfortunately, it was never from a salesperson. I mean, wouldn't it be awesome? Hey, I'm KC and I put this out there on uh, Google for you guys to find because I sell cars at an actual Toyota store. There is nobody that knows more about Toyotas than actual salespeople. So let me take a few minutes and tell you about the 2022 Camry. And why is that not there? There's 16,000. Toyota salespeople, give or take, 16,000. And I've got none of them online. You're not on the first page of Google search. I can't find you when I want to walk around, but I can find an influencer or a road and track or car and driver, somebody that may not even like the Toyota product, they're on page one. I need to get you on page one because I want them to find you. They've already found the car. They're not dumb. They know if they want a Toyota, if they go to a Toyota dealership, they can get a Toyota. They figured that out but they have no idea you work there. And that's the key. When they know that you're there and the reason they're going is because of you. So watch this, listen to this carefully. So Toyota becomes its own influencer, but people don't buy cars from Toyota, they buy cars from dealerships, and more importantly, they buy cars from sales professionals. So you can't purchase a car from Toyota. I can't call up Toyota, Motor North America, and order a SE Camry delivered to my house. I have to go through a dealership. So it's very interesting that the influencers can't sell the final product. So who do I think should be the most important influencer? Salespeople. So it's funny that I did this digitally for you on a digital meeting that I'm having with you right now. I could have done that. I could have done that word track standing right here, but I'm showing you right now, once I've got that digital message, then I can send it to you guys for months and years. Once I've produced this message, this message never goes away and I can use it over and over and over again. So the next session I'm going to show you is a little bit about green screen. Um, you know, I shot a bunch of green screen in my studio the other day. And this is me standing with my eyes closed, getting ready to go on green screen. Now, what can I put behind me? I can put just some words and maybe a photo, or I could put an entire graphic. Depends on how much time you want to spend on green screen. Let me give you a little green screen message here. Hey gang, the art of green screen is not difficult. 
Speak like you're speaking to your family. Hey, mom, hey, dad, I wanted to make sure that before you came in, I told you five things about the RAV4. You haven't bought a car in 10 years, and I know this is going to be completely different. So I've got green screen. I've got stuff behind me right here. I'm going to be gesturing to my right-hand side, which will be left on yours. We'll be throwing stuff in here. What we're going to do is we're going to try to do a visual and an audible to be able to make sure customers understand who they're dealing with because the most important component in any sale is always you. So we're going to feature you and green screen. I've got a couple of intro videos that will follow this. All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you an intro video. And, and everybody's been told to greet the customer professionally, to meet and greet or whatever they call it. To meet, shake your hands, smile, welcome them to the facility. That's what you do. I don't think you need to do that anymore because you can do it multiple days before they come in. In fact, you can introduce yourself before the customer's ever decided where they're ever going to buy. They may, they may not come to your store but I'm still going to introduce myself. It is a Wednesday, it is a Thursday, it is a Monday, and you're not coming in until Saturday. You're going to meet me the day you requested information about the car. I got to assume, I'm assuming right now that you've done some research on the car. That is not a bad assumption. Most people have done some research. Most people know exactly what they want. They've done their research. And so I need to know what they don't know, which is me. And so what I'm going to do right now is I found out I got a lead on somebody on a car. Instead of breaking it down a Camry or a Corolla or a Prius, I did a generic. I've got it stored, and I can send this to the customer seconds after they said, I'm interested in a Camry. Watch. Hey, I'm Casey, and you have no idea how excited that I've been assigned to your account. I know that you're looking for a Toyota passenger car. And I got to tell you, other manufacturers have completely got out of the passenger car business. I don't understand that. The Camry's been the number one seller. Corolla is the number one seller in the history of the world. No car has ever sold more in that nameplate to Corolla. So you're looking for a Toyota passenger car, whether it's gasoline or hybrid, we make the best cars in the world. So here's my contact information. Please reach out to me the way you're most comfortable. I can't wait to work for you in person. Okay, I don't know how many leads you're going to get this year. I know that 89 or 88 percent of those leads aren't coming in. Well, I'm going to make sure that all of them have at least met me. If they decide not to come in, that's on their own. But I'm inviting them personally to the dealership. Not the dealership, not the brand, but me, the person that's going to sell them the car. You've got to know that that's the way to go. Once I've done this video once, I can use it hundreds or thousands of times. Let me do one on truck. Understand that I'm standing in front of the green screen right now. This is very simple. I just blacked out the green screen. I put a picture up there and I put my contact information. That, that is, that's so, most phones will do this without even a green screen setup. You can throw a background behind you. So this is very simple to do. Here's one on trucks, vans, and SUVs. Hey, I'm KC, and I just found out that you're looking in our truck, SUV, and van lineup for an all-new Toyota. I've been assigned to your account, and I'm super excited to start working for you. Hey, here's my contact information. Please reach out to me the way you're most comfortable. I can't wait to work for you in person. And the reason I chose to do this is because this is so simple that, that all I've got to do is put up whatever picture I want behind me, all my contact information, and once I've sent that out, the customer now has to have a reference point, and they can get a hold of me, they can text me, they can call me, they can email me, it doesn't matter if they have a question, but if they do contact me, then I know that I'm not going to be in the 89 to 88% miss category if they've reached out to me. So what I've done right now is I've, is I've tried to get you into the plus percentages because that's where the money is. Brand yourself. I'm going to end this session today. I'm going to come back with session two next week. So there'll be a three-part series on this. Watch this a couple of times. Think about what I've said. You don't have to agree, but think about where the world is going. Are we going to become more digital or are we going to go back to in-person again? What do you think? Which is the best way to secure your future? Be a professional. Professionals train every day. PK52, the Saturday morning meeting.